Clark's being held by a mercenary group in a Siberian black site. Get up, Barry. The goat's on fire! We're going to Russia. Sweet. One of the twists of this adventure is that Superman is supposed to have landed in Siberia. We all think that they're gonna find Superman, and what they find is Supergirl. Is Superman, like, petite? They find uh, what they call Subject Zero in a dark side in Siberia that is being run by mercenaries. That was shot weeks in different pieces. That was all stage work and it's a combination of the great artistry of Paul Ostroberry and our wonderful set decorator as well. That was one of the major things we had to create. And strangely, in this early script, it wasn't a missile silo base at all. It was a Russian gulag prison kind of site, a walled penitentiary in, in Siberia. So then I proposed to Andy, what do you think if we make it like a disused military base of some sort. That way it gives you a larger language that we can pull from. So once we switched it into the Cold War military kind of base, it opened up the visuals a lot. It's not about who they're trying to keep out. It's about what they're trying to keep in. Superman's down there for sure. There was some great early uh, missile base research in terms of just some general abandoned spaces. It still had a lot of the kind of raw ingredients in there. So it kind of informed a few pieces, including this huge kind of bowl that's there to keep Supergirl contained, where the dastardly scientists were doing all their heinous experiments on her. I loved the cell. I loved my cell. And action! It's just this, like, a ball, we'll call it. And it opens up, and it is the coolest thing. I remember I got there, and I was like, whoa! I'm like, do it again! I was like, show me, do it again! <laughs> The beginnings of that design was when I was looking at all this Cold War and military bunkers. I came across some bunkers in Albania that were sort of hemispherical, like one, one sphere with these big steel doors that opened out in front of them. And then Andy really wanted to have a, a sort of a sphere within a sphere. We were pushing the envelope a little bit there. So when you come walking down the, the big corridor, you see this sort of like an eyeball at the end. And it was like the iris opening as the, the petals open up to reveal what's inside. And inside, the, the whole thing is lined with these glowing mortar in between all the ceramic tiles, which all glowed and pulsed. That was quite a triumph. I, was, I enjoyed doing that. It was a challenge because that's a special effects rig. And people would say, oh, visual effects did that, you know, because that's what they say these days, isn't it? But they'll be wrong. I'll grab her, just go! Sometimes the script uh, influences the sets, and then other times the sets influence the script. We created the sphere, and then, and then more action came from, from that sphere. Then we had the ball slightly dropping. They slide underneath, and he had this idea of them sliding underneath and escaping out the bottom. And we're, we're going down slide tubes, going down drains, going up an elevator, and then we explode out. And then that's when Subject Zero sort of becomes Supergirl, so to speak. The whole journey of her character from being found in the dungeon and then to her emancipation, there's a kind of visual arc to that as well as obviously a story arc. And the visual arc is photographically, it starts in cold foreboding, which is why we use a lot of green, blue and red to stand out in that color palette. But then it's, it's a very strategic use of sunlight when she finally gets out. The whole purpose of the sunlight is giving her energy, but visually the idea is to make the sunlight feel very strong and very powerful so that you can see where her power is coming from. She's been weak for years in a cell and she's finally becoming the woman alien that she is. That was my emotional moment. Andy specifically wanted her character to be very raw and run on instinct. Even though we had choreography, it couldn't look like choreography. It had to look like it was a spontaneous, instinctive move. We should just keep doing this because the improvement's massive. Training was what I was the most excited about. I couldn't wait. I was like, how many trainers am I going to have? When do we start? Fly me in soon. I want to work out. And stunt training became like my safe haven. That was my favorite part of creating Supergirl. What's it like to fly? Hard. <laughs> <laughs> because we had Sasha in the wires quite a lot, we got to learn her thresholds. So rather than have her in, like, for 20 minutes, we, we take it out after 17 and give it a break. 
So we, we were never getting her to that realm where she was in pain. That's all about working together for a while to learn them thresholds to do the journey together. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Look it. Sasha was so hands-on. I mean, Sasha did 99% of all her own action. I was like, am I getting a stunt double? Like, I haven't met her. Like, what is happening? And she yelled from across the room. She's like, oh, you don't need one. She became um, part of the stunt team, if I'm honest. Yeah, we did a lot with her. That was one of the scenes that Sasha worked really hard on. And the flashes really were secondary in action-wise because they were more or less standing in awe of watching Supergirl do what she does. Sasha is the kind of actress that likes to do it all and is very capable of doing it all. When she turns it on, mate, she turns it on. She was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I should have seen that in slow-mo.